Welcome to Student of Awakening and Revival Shore. Today we are continuing our conversation and hopefully this is going to be the final part of telling and retelling of revival stories, which is a subtitle under the principle number four of principles of the revival, nine principles of the revival. Aren't you excited that we have come this far from number one to number two, number three, and now we're on number four. My name is Dustin Babalola. I am the host of SOAR. So if you'd like to join us, please reach out to me, whether you're listening to this from the archive or you're listening um, as a replay. Join us at when at Student of Awakening and Revival. And um, every night we get notification to listen in on the broadcast. You get the opportunity to converse uh, with the broadcaster on the chat room of MixLR. You can also drop a heart and then um, you can leave a comment and stuff like that. So you're not left out of the conversation at all. You are not left out of the conversation. So let's just get right into it today. We're looking at the principle number four, which is the faith to believe that the revival is possible. We talked about what faith is, why you need to believe, that why you need to apply faith, and why your faith needs to be backed up with your action. It was in the process of looking at what actions can back up your faith to believe that revival is possible, that we began to talk about the need to tell and retell revival stories. So the final, the final scenario I'm going to paint to us today is an event that happened in 1943. As a student of revival, you cannot be afraid or tired of listening to revival history, church history, missionary history, and the rest of that because it is one of the pillars of your study you can well yeah you're a student of revival because you study anyway <laughs> so this this is one of your pillar as a member uh, uh, it's one of the pillars that holds this com community together we must study so uh it says the story we'll look at today is from 1949 but before we do that i just want to take us through a few scriptures jeremiah 6 verse 16 should be at the tip of your finger as a student of revival jeremiah 6 verse 16 and what does he say jeremiah 6 16 says don't say at the lord stand here in the way and see and ask for the old path where is the good way and walk therein and ye shall fight find rest for your souls for they said we will not walk therein Stand in the ways, ask for the old parts. Where is the good way? That's the good way. It's the old path, but it is the good way. Many things we see today confuse us. We're not even actually sure what exactly is going to bring the revival. People call a lot of things revival, but we're not really sure what, what, what they mean because we have looked at it and we have compared it to what has been in the past. And honestly, it's it's sad, but many things do not tally with what has been before. So this is a major scripture for us as we look at this point. You need to ask for the ancient part. You know that song, it says, show us the ancient part. Lead us along eternal highway. We want to walk in the footsteps of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. And you see, the thing is that it's very dangerous when we err or we take a detour from the ancient past. If we decide to ignore the ancient past, it has a lot of consequences. Let me read for you Joshua chapter 4, verse 17. If you can, please read um, Joshua chapter 4, verse 17. I'm turning there myself. Uh, so Joshua 4, 17 talks about how that Joshua had led the children of Israel out of the... Uh, when Moses had led them out of captivity, they were just now about to enter into the promised land. They were now about to enter into Canaan. And here is Joshua, right? So let me take it from, 
for uh, from 17 actually it's not just 17 we're reading we're reading from verse 17 and it says that joshua therefore commanded the priest saying come ye up out of out of jordan and it came to pass when the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the lord were come up out of the midst of jordan and the soles of the priests feet lifted up unto the dry land that the waters of jordan returned unto their place and flowed over all the banks as they did and people came up out of jordan on the tenth day of the first month and encamped in gilgal in the east border of jericho and those twelve stones which they took out of jordan did joshua pitch in gilgal and he spoke unto the children of israel saying when your children shall ask their fathers in time to come saying what mean these stones then ye shall tell your children you shall let your children know saying israel came over this jordan on dry land for the lord god dried up the waters of jordan from before you until you were passed over and the rest he told them so praise god this is what i'm trying to tell you you will always need to tell a, a story posterity the children coming after you will t will ask you oh your children will ask you and you better have something to tell them the revival we long to see i am paying close attention to everything that i can to the things that are going on right now because i i really want to be able to capture how god will come and i want to be able to tell it to a generation the generation that will actually see the coming of our lord and savior jesus christ i want because they will need it in order for them to be preserved in the midst of the tribulations that are still yet to come so it says when your children ask you you will be able to tell them that the, the lord your god brought you out praise god now let's look at what now finally happened even after joshua had told them all these things let's turn to judges chapter 2 from verse 8 to 10 we're moving from joshua 4 to judges chapter 2 from verse 8 to 10 and joshua the son of Nun, the servant of the lord died being an hundred and ten years old and they buried him in the border of his inheritance in timan Reyes, in the mount of ephraim on the north side of the hill gash and also all that generation are gathered unto their fathers and there there arose another generation after them which knew not the lord nor yet the works which he had done for israel praise god another translation says when all that generation had been gathered to their fathers let me find another one he says and also all that generation were gathered to their fathers i'm looking for a generation sorry i'm looking for a version right that says all of them died that's what it means all of joshua's generation literally died It's another one says they passed on it says now the whole generation the generation that had walked with moses the generation that saw the walls of jericho fall that generation passed on and another generation drew up after them a generation that did not know the eternal and have not seen the great works he had done for israel praise god so there will always come a generation after you that will ask you questions and the thing is that the world is always ready to fill them up with information information that is different from the one that god wants them to have we call this generation the oh, I, I, information overload or something like that i'm asking myself what exactly is the information that they are that they are overloaded with for heaven's sake what's the information that they are overloaded with may god help us in jesus name amen amen so i'm gonna read this story and then we will pray it's the revival that took place a very popular one actually it took place in a city in the in new zealand yes yes no not new zealand it's 10 british revival new hebrides Hebrides are awakening. The new Hebrides are awakening. So, a background story to this: there is a blind woman intercessor and prayer warrior who 
the Lord revealed to that there's going to be a revival. Her name is Peggy and her sister, who also had like uh, serious arthritis. Uh, both of them were praying together and in that vision god had shown peggy that a lot of young people were going to start going into the churches right so she called for her pastor to tell him about this vision and the pastor pastor mckay murray mckay he already knew what god was saying because he said his wife also had the same encounter so this old lady peggy instructed the pastor to go and find the the man of god whose name is duncan camp campbell is a revivalist and they said they should bring him from where he was i think he was in another city so campbell got their invite and he turned it down because he had a tight schedule so he turned it down and the mckay pastor returned back to uh the the intercessor peggy that the Revivalist has declined their offer, their invite. So the intercessor insisted that he should he should still check again. He should ask the man of God again. And this time around, he did. And while Peggy continued praying, here is what happened. I read, unaware of these events in the town of Lewi, Campbell was beginning to wonder whether he would he had done the right thing in turning down the invitation to preach he felt strongly impressed by god to accept the invitation he had rejected but the decision already had already been made about that time peggy smith and her sister began praying for revival god began preparing don campbell for the revival at home he was preparing a sermon in his study when a granddaughter asked him why doesn't god do the things today that you talk about in your sermons the child's question brought down deep conviction to campbell he shut the study door and fell on his face before god praying lord if you will do it again i'll go anywhere to have revival a little time later he sat in the front row getting ready to preach at the famed keswick bible conference it was the opportunity of a lifetime a place Campbell had already dreamed of preaching. Nevertheless, the Holy Spirit told him to leave immediately and go to the new Hebrides island to accept the invitation he had previously turned down. Turning to the moderator, Campbell excused himself, saying, Something has come up. I must leave immediately. He left the building and went to catch the next boat to new Hebrides. As Campbell stepped off the boat, he didn't look well. Crossing from the mainland to the island as if on a choppy winter sea had left him sick. The church elders who met him wondered whether he'd be able to preach that night. He preached, and yes, preach he did, drawing from the parable of the ten virgins, Matthew 25, 1 to 13, challenging Christians concerning their responsibility towards those who were asleep in sin. There's fire here, thought one of the lee elders so instead of going home that evening he walked across the moor to pray by a pent bank the next night according to one report a solemn hush came over the church as campbell preached after the benediction the people knelt as campbell stepped out of the pulpit to to leave as well a young deacon raised his hand moving it in a circle mr campbell he said god is overing over us he is going to break through i can hear already the rumbling of heaven's chariot wheels at that moment the door opened and the clerk of the session the church elders beckoned to campbell calling come and see what's happening when he went outside he discovered that the entire congregation had remained outside the church others had joined them as well drawn from their homes to the church by some irresistible force they couldn't explain the faces of more than 600 people in the churchyard was marked by deep distress suddenly a cry from within the church pierced the silence one young man agonizing in prayer had felt such intense anguish that he fell into a trance and lay prostrate on the floor the crowd streamed back into the church filling the building beyond its capacity a witness later recalled 
the awful presence of God brought a wave of conviction of sin and caused even mature Christians to feel their sinfulness, bringing groans of distress and prayers of repentance from the unconverted. Strong men were bowed down under the weight of sin and cries for mercy were mingled with shouts of joy from others who had passed on into life. A mother was standing with her arms around her son, tears of joy streaming down her face, thanking God for his salvation. Oh, praise the Lord, she cried out, you are come, you have come at last. Praise God. So there is a lot to read about the Hebrides uh, revival, but what I want to bring home and bring to us here is the fact that a little girl asked a question. A little girl asked a question. I want to God that God will raise more young children like that who will challenge the elders who will challenge the status quo who will say these things that god did these things that you claim that god has done before why doesn't he do it anymore that was what the girl said oh he says if you do why doesn't god do the things today that you talk about in your sermons my 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 gratitude to god after I read this story, it was even that at least the man was telling the story. Abby, the man was telling the story. So that is one thing to be grateful for. And that is why I'm challenging you again today, one more time, like I've challenged us in the last two days. Let us embrace revival stories. Let us pay the price. Our, our posterity, our children and children's children, they will live to ask us these things and we must be armed with it. And then the revival will fall as we tell it, as we tell it. Praise God. Can we begin to pray tonight? Remember, you're praying for yourself and you're praying for all others in the body of Christ, in the church of God, who are also passionate about the revival and long to see the revival. Let us pray that God will give us the fortitude the courage and the strength to continue to tell these stories and not to give up and not to give up to continue to tell these stories and not to give up to so the faith to believe that these things will happen again and that as we tell it it will stir up hunger and create an air of expectancy in the people who listen to us in the name of jesus that we will not run away from the kind of question that this girl asked she said why doesn't god to do today the things that you say that he has done the things that you talk about in your sermon father we thank you and we pray tonight in the name of jesus christ for all who are passionate about this revival we will not be tired. We will not be tired of searching and researching. We will not build our face just on what another man has said. In the name of Jesus Christ, Rakasite yedi barusha de balaka zante yada baba, Rada baba sata laka parada basandi, Rege de basandi ya. That our children, our children's children, they will they will hear us and they will ask questions, and quickly we will be able to respond to them accurately. O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we will tell them just as it happened, because we paid attention. In the name of Jesus Christ, may there not be one student of revival who will not be able to tell a re to tell a revival story that will inspire the hearers. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, we ask that right before our eyes, O God, right before our eyes, O God. Because we trust you, because we believe in the revival, we will see it happen in the name of Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter how people have abused it. It doesn't matter what people have said. It doesn't matter 
the errors it doesn't matter oh god we're asking you that you come we're asking you that you come we're asking you oh god that you come in the name of jesus that you break right you break right through our biases you break right through all our dogma you break right through oh god in the name of jesus christ we will not be discouraged we will not be tired i pray lord for every student of awakening and revival i pray oh god for everyone out there in the church of christ who is passionate about the revival god give us the grace and the tenacity to stay to stay to stay to stay in the place of study oh god that we will enjoy the fellowship of the spirit in the name of jesus as we study i ask that you give us oh god the right articulation the right expression to be able to tell of the things that we read about in the name of jesus christ Lord help us help us oh God help us help us oh God help us in the name of Jesus we have no other source of help we have to come to only you just like Campbell went before you oh God lying on his flat on his face and asking you that God if you will bring the revival I will go anywhere ah father we run to only you we ask you oh God that if you will bring the revival we will go anywhere if you will bring the revival we will go anywhere if you will bring the revival we will go anywhere we make that our prayer oh god tonight in the name of jesus if you will bring the revival lord we will go if you will bring the revival lord we will study if you will bring the revival just be because we tell just because we talk about the revival story just because we talk about the stories from the past if you will if that is what it will take father cause us to we will tell it lord we will tell it we will tell it from the mountain top we will tell it in the pews we will tell it in the pulpit we will tell it on the road lord we will tell it in the valley we will tell it oh god by the river sides we will tell it oh god if you will send this this your overwhelming presence Lord, we will tell, we will tell of this, this revival. We will tell of your power. We will tell of your wonders, oh God. Help us, help us. If you will drink your revival, Lord, we will go. We will go. We will go to Rwanda. We will go to Burundi. We will go to Malawi. We will go to Chad. We will go to Algeria. We will go to Egypt. We will go to Entre. We will go to Equatorial Guinea. We will go to Guinea-Bissau. We will go, Lord, to Senegal. We will go to Somalia. We will go to morocco lord we will go to ghana we will we'll go lord we will go to congo we'll go to gabon we'll go to the the republic of congo wherever you send us father we will go we'll go to sao tome and the principi lord we will go as you say it we will go we will go to libya we will go to liberia we'll go to lesotho we'll go to switzerland we'll go to south africa we'll go to sudan we'll go to south sudan as you say it lord you will go if you you will bring this revival we will go tell it on the mountain over the hills and everywhere we will go oh lord we will go this is our commitment father tonight we ask oh god that as you have as you have stayed with us on this call you will honor your word we also commit father to fulfill our part of this pledge oh god help us help us lord help us help us because it is not in man who wills to perfect it his own ways you are still the one who makes all these things happen so we ask for your help dear god in the name of jesus christ we have prayed tonight and god's people said amen amen and amen let me see your comment in the chat room i just want to know that you are there i believe that tonight is a night of uh, consecration and commitment 
it's a night that we all have uh, pledged ourselves to the work and to this assignment and i know that as many of us who have said this the lord has heard you and the lord will surely bring these things to come to pass but remember to fulfill your vow remember to play your part in this contract in this agreement praise the lord uh tonight is quite a brief one compared to yesterday by the way if you didn't listen to yesterday's broadcast i think you should that's principle of revival uh number uh, episode 12 episode 12 it was quite long but it was very interesting and interactive thanks to sister mc and we talked about you know um we talked about just the faith to do the next thing we read a couple of revival stories and we also looked at the life of evangelist reinhard bonke a sneak peek into his his final remark in his autobiography which i also posted on the whatsapp group so please do well to get the full recording on the showreel uh just on the page of uh, student of our week, student of revival on Mixelar, and you'll be able to catch the full gist. If you haven't joined us on WhatsApp, please do so. We drop our notifications there, and we also share other materials that pertain to the revival. If you have friends who you think might be interested in this daily broadcast, please send me their phone numbers, and I will invite them in. If you also want to join the prayers, like you want to broadcast you want to you want to um lead us in prayer right please you can reach out to me and i will show you the abc on how to use your mix lr to do broadcast so that you will be able to speak and then we will hear you and um we will we, we will hear you and you will teach us and lead us in prayers as well if you have a question please drop it in the comments here on mixer or send it on the whatsapp group i always take it as a privilege and opportunity to be able to do this with you every night and which is why i look forward to meeting you one more time tomorrow and tomorrow is going to be very interesting because i'm going to be teaching from the scripture in first peter chapter 3 verse 15 i'm going to be teaching from first Peter chapter 3 verse 15 still under this principle of faith to believe that the revival is possible and it says but sanctify the lord god in your heart and be ready to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason for the hope that is in that is in you with meekness and fear praise god he says always be ready to give a defense humbly and respectfully always be ready to give a logical defense to anyone that asks you to account for the hope that is in you the hope that is in you is what that revival is going to happen that we are going to see a revival that is deeper greater wider than any other revival we have ever heard of or seen before and the one that by god's grace will usher in the coming back of our lord and savior jesus christ so you you need to have a reason for that hope which you have right and in doing so there's a way there's a way you will you will capture the people i'm gonna get into it tomorrow you just need to join and be part of this broadcast tell all your evangelism secretaries tell them to come and listen to this broadcast tomorrow it promises to be enlightening and eye-opening so thank you so much um we have to go now there will be a replay of this tomorrow afternoon in uh, nigeria time yes there's going to be a replay tomorrow afternoon so for those who can join please do well to join i will see you in the next episode uh god bless you and have a wonderful time bye bye <music>